I hope you stopped in to talk about hot penny stocks. Don't worry, I'll do all the talking. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday, March 11th. What we like to do around here is have a little bit of fun as we focus in on a hot penny stock. I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. Definitely no shortage of penny stocks. But I'm particularly looking for stocks that have heat, that have potential to make us money. Now you can find that heat by going through the filings and the press releases, or you can find a hot chart. Me, myself, I like to get the best of both worlds. Get myself a hot piece of news to match a hot chart. Ah, we've got ourselves a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. Well, I've got one for you right now. This is Auto Parts for Less Group, ticker FLES. She had some big news come out today that got everybody excited and the stock exploded, jumping basically 100% today. She broke out of a downtrend and out over her 200. Now, we don't normally expect the first breakout over the 200 to be the run, but it was solid. She's come back down and she settled above her breakout point and she's looking good. And as I said, she does have some hot news right now. So, ticker FLES finished the day just under three cents at 0 0.029 and she did drop three and a third percent today. She is on the bottom tier of the OTC, the pink. She is current. And she's got one of those green ticks we're always talking about, which is validated information. We've got a transfer agent verified, but we don't have a verified profile. I make a big deal about these because that's the only validated information you get with pinks. Pinks don't come with a whole lot of information, which is what makes them risky. So what is Auto Parts for Less about? Well, they tell us here that Auto Parts for Less entered the online auto parts business in 2015, selling lift kits and other aftermarket accessories for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs on eBay and Amazon. But they had to shut it down because of COVID. We had a piece of news come out here on March 4th. They have reactivated this subsidiary, if you will. They tell us that the company announces the reactivation of its specialized e-commerce website, liftkitsforless.com. Lift Kits for Less originally launched in 2015 and quickly became one of the leading suspension websites in the world. Check this out. In 2021, Lift Kits grows $16 million in revenue across all e-commerce channels. However, the company faced significant COVID-related challenges due to the supply chain disruptions, resulting in a 25% cancellation rate, and that pretty much shut them down. And now they are back up and running. And I want you to remember that number right there, $16 million in revenue. That is huge, folks, compared to what they've been doing. And this is their new site, Lift Kits for Less. It looks a lot like their original site. They've got the same branding going on, and it covers everything. I don't work with this sort of stuff, but they tell us they've got the shocks, the lift kits, the uh, wheels and tires. They've got it all here. Now, they also tell us that in 2020, the company began their development of Auto Parts for Less site as a pure play, multi-seller enterprise, level marketplace, entering the $500 billion annual aftermarket automotive parts industry. And they supply parts for cars, trucks, commercial vehicles, boats, motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, RVs, all on a single platform. I think the only things I can think of that have a motor and a seat that they're not covering are lawnmowers and mopeds. They go on to tell us here that Auto Parts for Less was officially launched November of 2022. At that time, they had 2 million parts that were being listed from over 25 part sellers. Now they've got over 5 million parts, and I have no idea how many part sellers they have. And honestly, folks, that is one of the selling points to me about this company. It's a great business model. It's almost like drop shipping. I know a lot of us don't like that term, but this is what it's all about. They've got 5 million different products. Do you really think they're all in their one warehouse and they've stocked a whole bunch of each one of them? No. What they've done is made deals with all the different 
companies that make these parts. When we have an order that goes into Auto Parts for Less, they forward that order off to whomever has our parts and they get it off the shelf of their own warehouse and then they mail it to us, which is great for them. That keeps their liability down. They don't have to own all the property, all the warehouses, don't have to have all the employees, don't have to do all that work, but they get to make all that money. And this is their other site, which looks like the first site, right? They've got that branding going down and everything you can think of they sell here, including tools, right? I mean, that's just a hand in the glove. If you're gonna sell parts for cars, you should be selling the tools too, because chances are they're gonna need a tool that they haven't got. So that is a good sideline business. The car parts, the tools, and the lift kits, they should start making some real strong revenues. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, nice explosion there. We went up uh, over 500%, going from 854,000 shares a day for the last 30 days to almost 6 million shares today. Share structure for Les. All right, they tell us that the outstanding share count is about 79 million and that the insiders own 66 million, which leaves us with a great float of 12 million. Ah, but it's not accurate. I jumped into their most recent financial, which came out October of 2023. It's not right up to date, but I think these numbers are a lot better. They tell us that back in April of 2022, they did a reverse split, a 10 and one, which really brought the share count down to just under 2 million. And since then, they've added some more shares. And currently, we have just over 7 million shares outstanding. Now, this number isn't just right there. It's in a lot of different places in this financial. So I trust that number. So we are less than one-tenth what they tell us here. We are down at just about $7 million outstanding. Now, I don't know what the float is, but I know it's a low float. It's better than $12 million. It's going to be under $7 million. Outstanding. Market cap can't be trusted. Market cap is figured out by taking the price and multiplying it times the outstanding share count, and that is the math for that. So basically, our market cap is going to be one-tenth of what it is now, too. So we're down to $200,000 on the market cap for this company. He gets. Taking a look at the financials. All right. Back when they came into business, the first two years were pretty steady. They did about $8 million each year. We know that's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2022 was a banging year. They did 11 million. But what happened? 2023 in January, we're all the way down to $4 million. Yeah, we are bringing home profits all the way along the way, but that is a huge drop. I honestly don't know. I could only make a presumption that maybe the economy, people are putting off car repairs for as long as they possibly can. I really don't know. Take a look at those quarterly reports. Oh yeah, she's falling. Look, a year ago, we were at a million dollars for three months revenue. Here, at the end of October 2023, we were down to 148,000, which is, which is high compared to the quarters before that. So we have dropped an awfully lot here. Taking a look at the balance sheet. Okay, the balance sheet isn't exactly right, and I'll explain why here in a minute. Cash and cash equivalents. How much have they got in the bank? Not very much about $12,000. That's it. Total assets. Not very much. Oh my God, $253,000. Now, if they were storing all their own products in the warehouse, we'd have this huge inventory number up here. But as it is, they've only got $33,000 worth of in inventory, though they're selling over 5 million different parts. Total liabilities. All right, this is where we get hit hard. 27 million in liabilities. You can see a lot of that is coming from short-term and current long-term debt of 14.8 million, which is what the news is talking about today. So as of October last year, we were holding deficit, the investors, of $27.9 million. I do believe that's down about $10 million right now, but we're working on it, but it isn't picture perfect yet.
Let's take a look at our disclosures. Got a whole bunch of 8Ks here going all the way back to February 20th, and every single 8K is just announcing a press release. So that's where we're going to get this information is by looking at the press releases. So here we are at February 20th. First piece of news. Auto Parts for Less announces conversion of $7.4 million in debt into preferred shares. All right, that is $7.5 million that they owed somebody. Well, they talked them into taking shares. They gave them preferred shares, which is really good for me and you. Preferred shares can't be bought or sold until they're converted into common shares. I don't know exactly how many it is. It's going to be a lot. And that will be added to the outstanding share count when it happens. When is that supposed to happen? The contingency I read is when they get uplisted to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, then they're going to convert their preferred shares into common shares, and that's when they'll be able to sell them. But as it stands right now, we are still down here on the pink, and we have got $7.5 million off of our debt. They are now investors. Then we have a piece of news that came out at the beginning of March, the reactivation of liftkitsforless.com to accelerate revenues. What did we see? $16 million in annual revenues in 2021. And what did Auto Parts for Less do last year? Four and a half million. The year before was their best year, 11 million. And just by themselves, Lift Kits did 16 million. So honestly, I'm anticipating between 20 and 30 million for, for the next year. That's what I would think, up at least 500%. Then we've got a piece of news here on the 7th. Uh, they talk about this upcoming presentation with Buffalo Fireside Chats. This is another influencer that likes to talk about penny stocks. This is already done, folks. It was done yesterday on March 10th. Check it out. It's on YouTube by Buffalo Fireside Chats. I like his information. And then the last piece of news we got here came out today. Auto Parts for Less Group announces successful debt conversion to strengthen balance sheet. This again is taking someone you owe money to and rather giving them money, you talk them into taking shares. You've paid off your debt and you've converted it into an investor and that money is in your company, not coming out of it. It is a double win. They tell us here on March 6th and 8th, 2024, the company successfully converted debt and accounts payable totaling $1.2 million into common stock with a two-year lockup period. These people are smart. This prevents us from seeing a pump and dump. Let's say this piece of news came out today and it ran 1,000%. I mean, it did run 100% today. Well, what would stop the investors who just bought all this stock from selling and cashing in right now? that lockup period. This stock can run numerous times. They cannot sell their shares for two years. So it's an honest investment. So we see seven and a half million coming off of that first piece of news. We got 1.2 million here. We're closing in on 10 million. That is a huge chunk of debt. And now they've brought back lift kits for less, which is proven to make good revenues we're making better revenues than this company, so we know that that's going to start growing now as well. Cut down your debt, kick up your revenues. Things are looking real pretty. Let's go take a look at that chart and see how she's set up now. Uh, let's do some charting. We're over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim, taking a look at Auto Parts for Less, ticker FLES. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of 36 cents. Our 52-week high is $1.09. And just over two years ago, we had an all-time high of $10. Now, the reason I bring that up is because of that 200-day SMA. You are going to see on all the charts we look at, the 200-day SMA is just falling out of the sky. Well, that's where it's coming from. That $10 high from two years ago. It literally took two years for that 200-day SMA to finally get close enough to the price so we could have a breakout attempt. Now, I've got three SNRs drawn up here, supports and resistances. Our current price is at $0.03. Cents. My first resistance is drawn at $0.09, 300% gain. 
Next one is at 15 cents. And my last one all the way up here at 33 cents. Now off of our six month high of 36 cents, she fell down here to about a nickel, but she was not done falling. She just kept going until she hit this ultimate low right here halfway through January of 0082. Came up off of that low and didn't go anywhere. She just came right back to her bed, the 50 day SMA. And then right here, she had a breakout towards the 200. There's no news, there's no filings. The 200 got close enough and she took off. Not a lot of excitement when she broke out. As a matter of fact, she calmed down. She laid right on top of that 200 day SMA for quite a few days. And then right here, we had our financials come out and they were horrible folks. Our revenues dropped severely. Our assets went down. Our liabilities went up and still the price ran hard from three cents to 14 cents. You're looking at over 400% run on garbage financials. <laughs> I'm just stating the facts, folks. Don't take it personally. From that 14 cents, she came right back down to the 200 here at 2.2 cents. She has bounced off of that 200 day SMA a few times. And right now she could climb or she could bounce. It's very difficult to tell. Now I'm going to focus in on this channel on the one hour chart. But what I want you to notice here, ever since she got on top of that 200, the volume has come into the picture and has continually been growing. Our oscillators, well, our PPO is a bit timid right now. It is going sideways. Our MACD is working on a crossover, but our RSI is falling. We did have a red bar here just at the end of the day. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. So here's a channel I drew on top of our highs as they were getting lower and lower. And I actually drew this a while ago. I was waiting for this to finally break through. Well, she did it today, actually. She is on top of the 200, on top of this channel, on top of the 50. She is in a perfect, strong position right now. Without this bar right here, it wouldn't look any different. Looks like she's just bouncing off of the 200 and doing nothing else. But the way I see it, she has had a breakout from her downtrend right here. She has finally gotten on top of this and is laying on it right now, probably going to bounce. Now let's see what our oscillators say. We're showing weakness on our PPO, which is a lot like your MACD. MACD works with the full price. PPO works with a percentage of the price. Our MACD, that too is falling right now. We've got a negative crossover in the picture and our RSI is even keel right now. Let's take a look at our 15 minute chart. Let's take a look there. So we are underneath that channel bar here, skidding across it with our head, finally broke it and the 200 came down and we are laying right on top of that channel I drew. Here comes our 200 day haul breaking through it. All of our SMAs are heading towards the 200 right now. Things are looking good on the chart, but the oscillators are looking very weak. Take a look at that five day, five minute. Pretty much sideways activity here, right? I mean, if I was to draw a line straight across there, that's pretty much where she's gone. She took a dip, she took a rip, but she's right back where she started from five days ago. And we are sitting on top of that channel I drew up underneath the 200 looks a little weak on the five day chart actually however <laughs> in saying that the chart looks weak the other charts were looking strong but the oscillators were showing weakness here on the five minute chart the chart looks a little weak to me but the oscillators show strength which is really where we look for our heat behind the scenes we do have the bend right now on our PPO occurring. Happening also on our MACD and our RSI is starting to climb right now. A lot of people are watching this. Volume exploded today and she looks like she is changing her trend. They have just now put lift kits for less up and they did $16 million in 2021. So I expect the revenues to start to grow as well. Everything actually looks pretty good to me right now. This could be a perfect time to make your entry. But of course, don't just do it because I said so. No, <laughs> go do your own due diligence. You know darn well I didn't cover everything and I may have missed something important that makes a difference to you. So please, 
do your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.